this is Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University and I'm going to show you how to take a Qualtrics instrument where you had an experiment and to create a new variable from several different other variables that will tell you which treatment cell each participant was in so that you're consolidating all the various data that Qualtrics has spit out for you into a single um, variable so that you can do analysis to figure out if one treatment is more effective as an independent variable than another um, because Qualtrics will not automatically do that for you. So um, you, I'm going to do this using the syntax method which is extremely efficient if you have a ton of different um, treatments. So in the case of this, the example that I'm going to show you today, I have an experiment with 12 different treatments. So I have 12 different experimental cells and um, each of the experimental um, cells are in their own little block as you can see here in my Qualtrics survey flow backend and I'm showing people only one of the treatments and then everybody goes to the post test. Now the way I have my treatment set up um, in the actual um, uh, front end of the Qualtrics is I have a uh, timer in here and so I have a timer question where I'm holding people on this page for 15 seconds. I'm not showing them the timer, but they can't move on from this page until after 15 seconds happen. So after 15 seconds, then they'll get an advance button and then, only then, are they allowed to move on. To show you what this looks like um, when I go into um, my Qualtrics, here's my consent form, and then I come to my page and you can see there's no button down here. And so Qualtrics is going to hold me on this site, on this page, for at least 15 seconds and then after 15 seconds, there it was, now I can advance. The thought is that now that the 15 seconds are up, people will have realized that, oh, I'm supposed to read the following online review and the organization's response before I proceed. Um, so that is how this particular um, Qualtrics uh, experiment is set up with 12 different experimental cells and people were only in one of the 12 experimental cells and then everybody did the exact same post test. So that's how the flow of this one was set up. All right, so uh, I'm gonna open up in um, SPSS a file that I downloaded with the results. I'm downloading the results the same way I always have. I go into my Qualtrics, into data and analysis. I go to export and I go to export data. I click on SPSS and then I click download and it downloads that way. And then I can open it up in SPSS, which just takes a minute because it's such a big program, it takes forever to open. Okay, so here we go. What I see in Qualtrics, in, in all of these little holes, that I have right here. I'm not concerned about them because that timer that I had set up to hold people on the page, that is basically um, creating four new little variables in every person's line of data. And they're only going to have data to um, annotate which of these 12 cells that they are in. So when I come to the very first one and I see that this guy has data in these as shows me that this guy was in cell number two. This guy was in cell number three. I'm sorry, two. this guy was in cell number one. This guy was in cell number two. This guy was in cell number three. This guy was in cell number four. Cell number five. 
cell number six, these two people down here, this guy and then this guy, were in seven, eight, and so on and so forth until I get all the way up to 12. And then the post-test begins. So in here, um, I have, I'll show you the variable view, the back end. You can see that I have a couple of different variables that have been created by my um, Qualtrics. Now, the only one that really will always have data in it is going to be page submit, whatever your beginning or your root is. So mine is SBX pause pause and then page submit. Um, so these page submit ones are the only variables that you're guaranteed when you're using a timer to have data in. Because if somebody um, didn't have any clicks, this guy right here did not click at all, and that's what this is, first click, the amount of time it took to the first click, the amount of time it took for the last click, uh, the amount of time it took until I submitted the page completely, and then the amount of clicks that I did. So he didn't click at all. He was not very nervousy about the whole thing, and he um, stayed on the page, didn't click, read the review, and then when he was done with the review, then he pressed submit. So because there are zeros in here, I'm not going to focus on these variables that might potentially have zeros on them. I'm going to focus on a variable for each of these 12 cells that will definitely have data in it. And for me, it's the ones that are the page submit. So that's this SBX pause pause page submit, SBX pause none page submit, SBX neg pause page submit, SBX neg neg page submit, SBX neg none page submit, etc. etc. And so it's these page submit variables that will definitely have data in them. So I'm going to open up syntax. I actually have uh, some syntax that I have created for this. So I'm going to open my syntax and in here I have um, a statement that will create a new variable from all of these 12 different page submit variables and what I'm basically saying in here is if there's anything in that page submit variable for these 12 different variables, this was cell one, this was cell two, this was cell three, et cetera. If there's any information in there at all and it's greater than zero, I want you to now assign it treatment group one, treatment group two. So that's what I have here, if space parentheses, and then I put the name of the first variable that I know has unique information in it, and it happened to be SPX pause pause page submit, and then I put a space is greater than zero parenthesis and then cell equals one. This means create a new variable, call it cell, and then if SBX pause pause page submit is greater than zero, I want you to give in this newly created variable, I want you to give it the value of one. The next one, if SBX pause none page submit, is greater than zero, I want you to go into that newly created variable called cell, and if it's greater than zero for this variable, I want you to now in cell give it a two as a value. If in SBX neg pause, page submit. If that one is greater than zero, I want you to give it a level of three. So in here, I'm going through all of my 12 different treatments and the specific variables that I know indicate that someone was actually in that treatment and I am telling it that this is uh, going to now be cell equals one, cell equals two, cell equals three for each of my 12 treatments in there. Um, so one thing you have to make sure of is that you have a period at the end of each of these statements and so as I look them over I do see a period at the end of each of them. 
Uh, the other thing that I have in here is that I want to um, give it a, a label. That's this little piece uh, in the back end here, label. It tells me what it is. I want it to say experimental cell. And then I also want to assign it values. All right, so let me just start with the first one. So I'll start with the first one and I'll go ahead and run the selection. And I should now at the bottom have a brand new variable called cell. I do. So it doesn't, I didn't run the other things. I didn't run the label and I didn't run the values because I want to do those individually to show you. So I now have a variable that's called cell. And it should fill out the numbers in here. Sometimes it takes a minute for them to show up. Let me run it again just to make sure because SPSS is our buggiest of friends. Looks like it's still running the transformation. Oh, I can see it with the question marks now. And then these question marks should actually turn into numbers. Boy, it is not fast at all, is it? We'll try one more time. Okay, 11th time is a charm. Finally got it to work. Okay, so here you can see the numbers. This means that this person was in cell number six. This person was in cell number 10. This person was in cell number eight, etc. Let me find somebody who was in one. Here we go. Person on line 23 was in one. Let's just do a check to make sure when I get all the way over to my SBX pause pause page submit that indeed this guy was in cell number one. Okay, so here we are in cell number one. It goes from here to here to showcase me cell number one, and yep, he was given a one. This guy guy on line number nine, he should be in cell number two. Let's go all the way to the end of the data set and check him out. Yep, he's in cell two. Fantastic. So then the next thing that I run is this uh, variable labels and the values. So this way I'm adding in the back end the label and the value. So I did run that as a part of my last version and you can see now I have experimental cell and now I have all of the values for all of my different SBX pause pause we now see is Starbucks positive review, positive response. Starbucks positive review, no response. Starbucks negative review, positive response, etc. And so now I can go through and do my manipulation checks or whatever I need to do. I see that I now have in this data set um, more than 100 people, 118 people have already completed this survey. So this is how you use syntax. I'm going to go ahead and paste all of this in the uh, YouTube description so that if you want to do something like this, you don't have to retype it. Good luck.